Uh, we've been going through the life of David, King David, from the time he was, um, before he was anointed, till he was anointed, and what happened after that. Now, so, at this point of time, we have reached the part where we've learned in the previous sessions where he committed adultery and also the consequence of sin, right? So we've been um, seeing um, the consequence of um, callous, callous living that resulted in him committing adultery, undisciplined, ill-disciplined life. Then uh, we, from there, we began to see um, after that sin, the many, many areas of David's life that got impacted. Right? So, so for the last few times, we are looking at the consequence of sin. So men have to be very careful, especially sin of the flesh. Okay, especially sin of the flesh, we saw here, that is very common. And then we saw in the Bible how the Bible always warns when it comes to men, it's always this particular weakness. In the book of Proverbs, we saw it's often about the weakness of the flesh, committing um, fornication. So here, one sin and many other problems, family problems um, um, in David's life. And then now we reach this stage where um, he will, will see more of his problems in his life. Okay? And when, as men, when we face all these things, the question is how, as men, do we handle issues? How do we manage these situations? Okay, so that's what, um, by God's grace, we want to begin to see tonight. He faced a lot of problems because of his sin. Did he handle the consequences well? Let us learn. Now, let's turn our Bibles to um, 2 Samuel chapter 13. 2 Samuel chapter 13. Now, here in chapter, 2 Samuel chapter 13, you see one of the um, very soon, in fact, very soon after the sin of adultery, God begins to record the terrible sin of incest and rape among David's children. Okay, so we want to read, and then from there on, various other things are going to follow on. How did David handle all these things? Now, can we read from chapter 13, verses 1 to um, verse 7, or 1 to 8, all right? Verses chapter 13, 1 to 8, let's read together. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick, and when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come. And he gave me meat, and dressed the meat in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down, and made himself sick, and when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister come. And make me a cup of cakes in my sight, that I may eat in thy hand. Then David said home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house, and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was late, and she made flour, and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us turn to God in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time we can gather. We thank you for um, the blessed meal, the wonderful meal that the sisters have prepared. We pray that, Lord, even as we now gather around your word, you would feed us with spiritual food. Remove all tiredness and distraction. And Lord, we pray that for obedient hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would use 
and these lessons that we have learned to change our lives as men. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, here we have a situation, and we know. After this, what happened, we know the story very well. Um, Amnon would overpower the half-sister and rape the half-sister, right? So we know the story. This is what happened. Now, here is a situation which sometimes we wonder about. Now, today we are going to look at David. David as a man. David as a father. David as a man, as a king. Okay? So, we will see David with different hats. A hat as a father. A hat as a king. Okay? And we ask ourselves, if you are a father, well, what lessons do we learn? Um, if you are a man, well, maybe one day we'll lead people. Or even just um, in our lives, how should we handle things when, it, when they happen? What are the principles? Where did David fail? What, where did David not fail? Okay? So here. Now, here is a, is a situation where I think we have to ask fathers, when you read this, what goes through your mind? Now, here is a situation where it seems quite, quite innocent, right? Um, the half-brother wants um, the half-sister to be present in the room with him, but we know that the intention was not good. Intention was not good. Um, I know we may say, well, if you were in the situation as a father, um, what would you have done? There are half brothers and sisters. Um, is there anything suspicious? What do you think? Claude, you have a daughter. Now, one day your daughter goes up, grows up. No, no, no. Let me see. Okay, you have a daughter. One day, Elim grows up. Okay? And then a boy, very close friend of the family, say, uh, I want to go out with Elim alone. I want to be Elim. I'm not well and I want Elim to take care of me. Uh, be with me alone. What would you do, Claude? Stop. You will stop. Are you sure? Yes, because it's alone. Huh? Because it's alone. They, are, they are alone. They are alone. Yeah. But this is your daughter. So easy. Okay. Uh, what about Douglas? You have a son. And your son say, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I've been courting this girl for a long time. We're very close friends. Can trust us. The daughter comes to your house. Very close family friend. And then one day, Jonathan, eh, um, not Jonathan. One day, uh, Joshua and, and her say, oh, we, we want to do something. Um, and dad and mom are going out. So he say, can I ask her to come over and watch TV? It's your son. Maybe your son with Elim. Grew up together in church. Ah, yeah, play together all the time. We know that each other's parents see them all the time. All right? No, also. And then Joshua just say, Ah, oh, Dad, you know, why not? We, we are so close friends. Of, we know each other's family. All looks so innocent. So are we at home together? Or? No, you're going out. Then they say, Can I ask Elim <coughs> over to watch TV together? Boy and girls to be alone, but know each other so well. Like in this case, ah, yeah, almost like brothers and sisters in Christ already. No, why? Because we are very easy to succumb to our fleshly lust. Mm. Anything can, can, uh, can go Okay, and then Jonathan um, say, hey, no, why can't we Joshua? Jonathan, Joshua, Where's Joshua, <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> 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 So Joshua make a big fuss and then keep pushing for a whole week. Keep saying, can or not, can or not. They're eating rice, so can or not, can or not. You know, when you're brushing teeth, you knock on the door, that can or not. All the time, can or not. Why, why, why? No, still no. <laughs> but such close family friends. You see the difficulty for David, right? It's half-brothers, half-sisters, right? What can go wrong? And sometimes that's how we are. In church also. Ah, yeah, just brother in Christ, 
sister in Christ. We are so close, do all these things together, grew up together. We studied David's life, correct? And then when we were studying that, we realized that for men, especially, we cannot trust the flesh. Hmm? We studied that in a lot of detail. We can't trust the flesh. Now, but one of the difficulties is this. Um, when it looks so innocent and when the person keeps bugging and bugging and bugging. So, um, um, Alex, the daughter keeps bugging, all right? Um, Veronica keeps bugging and bugging and bugging. I want to go with the boy, I want to go with the boy, I want to go with the boy. Keep bugging and bugging and bugging. Will you get tired of it? No. You won't get tired of it. Because his daughter, you know, definitely look after son, sometimes after some time. Ah, yeah, it's a son. Kind of thing, right? Ah, son. Now, actually, that, there must be no difference, all right? Some, some fathers think, if it is son, it's all right. Well, if you take advantage of a girl, my son don't lose out. The girl lose out. That's why fathers with daughters, you're more protective. It should never be the case. Be very careful, right? Be very, very careful. No matter how they push, no matter how innocent it may look, no matter how much you think nothing can go wrong, being alone is the problem. Being alone is a big, big problem. Right? We just have to um, know from this scene, even half-brother, half-sister, in this case the half-brother was the wicked one, can also um, do very wicked thing. Now, but I ask you this question. Huh? You look at chapter 13. Okay, for the single guys, um, Chapter 13 now, uh, verse 1, right? Um, Amnon, the son of David, loved Tamar. Okay, loved Tamar. And then when, Tam, when he told a friend, Jonadab, then in verse 4, he told a friend what? I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Okay, then Jonadab gave him advice. Just lie in bed and pretend to be sick. Your king's son, just lie in bed and pretend to be sick. Then ask the king to send Tamar to you, right? Now, um, okay, you're a single guy. Uh, maybe Caleb. All right. Do you think Jonadab had good intentions? No. Why? You got a good friend, I say, you like Aya, you like her, just ask your dad to ask her to come and see you. Why not good intention? Because uh, he knows it's not, I mean, it's not a right relationship. Mm -hmm. So why is he encouraging that? I love my half sister, you know. So still there's blood, right? There's blood relationship. Yeah. You see. Come on, you know, stop thinking, <laughs> stop being so, so carnal, you know, stop thinking of that. Um, and furthermore, what? Lie down in bed, verse 5, lie down in bed and ask your sister to come. Lie down in your room, you know. So do you think good advice, friendly, um, caring advice? No, not at all. Not at all, right? Well, I hope anyway for a guy, if, if any... Any of your friends or any of your brother come and, and ask for advice and you know it's not good, what should you say? Wow, good friend, I just, uh, just, just give them this advice. Please them. You better be a proper friend and, and handle the situation rightly. Don't be afraid to say, come on, stop. Stop that. Okay? But anyway, now back to this situation with the father. As a father, Adrian has two... Sons, one daughter. Two sons, one daughter. Now, as a father, do you think it's very difficult if your son or your daughter keep bugging and bugging and bugging want to, want to have this boyfriend or want to have this girlfriend or want to go out alone together? It's very tiring, right? And there come a point where, where it's very easy to just say, ah, give in. Ah. Huh? Wait, whose, whose children are older? Maybe John's children are older? Right? They are at a stage where they may start thinking, I want boyfriend, I want girlfriend, right? Um, those are too young. Ilim and, and, and Phoebe are all too young. Now at the age where they may come and all that. But anyway, we've always taught in church, right? Is it a good time to go into courtship when you're a student? Not wise. 
so long more to go, right? Do you think boys' characters are stable when they are 18, 19? Very often not stable yet, right? Not stable yet. Just tell them they're not stable yet. No, daddy, they're stable, very stable. Then how? Very stable, very difficult. Then every day, bug, bug, bug. Very tiring, right? But the temptation to give in must always be resisted. Must always be resisted. I want to go to this place. I want to do that. I want to do this. And once you smell something not right. Now I'll tell you one parent once. The daughter keeps saying, I want to go out. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to go out. And the mother smelled something not right. Okay? But it's very tiring, you know, as parents. Okay, the daughter keeps bugging, bugging. Parents know your child quite well. Usually they say something, you know this is not the normal thing. You can smell it. And after a few months, just very tiring, then she said, something is not normal. Went to the room, the daughter's room. I'm not encouraging you to go and go through your children's uh, what, but I think as a parent, when you think something is strange, you have the right to begin to go and find out. And then begin to find out books in the daughter's room. How to kiss, how to have sex. Then you know, this is a big problem. And I remember the mother said, I thank God that I did not give in and I just kept standing firm. All these things were happening. Something was fishy. Now, David should already sense something is fishy. Uh, doctor, when a person is sick, want to eat cake. <laughs> want to, okay, the patient say, Doctor, doctor, I want that nurse, that particular nurse to come. Uh, and that nurse, you're, I'm very, very sick. All right, I want to eat pancakes. And that kind of thing. Then you already say something very sick. What, what are you thinking about all these things? And asking in particular, why do I ask the servant? I'm a king, you know, so many servants. Why insist that it must be the half-sister? Now, sometimes as parents, as men, we just have to um, be more cautious. Be more so-called suspicious. When, when our children are going to a certain age, we just have to be careful. All right, so David here, um, I know it may not be fair to say David failed yet because half-sister, right? But I, when I read this, I feel that David should have sent something. A sick son who wants a half-sister to be in the bedroom to cook, to be with him. All right? So fathers, be a bit more suspicious. Be a bit more careful. Mm, be more careful, especially in this generation, um, it's very difficult. It's a generation where uh, premarital sex is, is fully accepted. Um, I was just reading an article the other day. Um, one one um, major movie that has come out, I tell you I don't watch these things, uh, but I like to read and find out what's the trend. This, this major new movie is about the daughters, all a group of school students, daughters, want to lose their virginity on what night? Uh? Um, prom night. Over here is what night they call it? The graduation night. Huh? School, school wall. Oh, ball. Wall. It's like ball. <laughs> right, 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 graduation ball, that kind of thing. So in America, it's very common, right? Then this group of parents are very suspicious. And then they try to intervene. And the whole thing sounds like it's just funny. You know, just funny. It's not funny um, at all. Um, but it is a situation that, that is the case now. So fathers, be very, very cautious. And anyway, always try to encourage and advise your, your daughters, your sons. Don't get into courtship. Now, I can't tell you how many counseling sessions I've gone through um, Counseling girls that are crying and crying and crying in the room because their boyfriends, and after a few years, the boyfriend dumb her or the other way around, and then cry some more and just get so upset and say, he, he was not like that. You know, how come he changed? And we always say, they change. They're very unstable. When do they get stable? Hopefully, when they start working, going through life a bit, then you know the character stabilizes, right? So sometimes it's just very difficult. But do your daughters understand? Do your son understand? They don't. But must you persevere? That's where fathers come in. 
You just need to persevere. Sometimes we become big quarrel at home. Now, David, if he sends something and he says, ah, this is not right, and he persevered, well, maybe a lot of tantrums from the sun. Now, but the question is, David, what is his trait what, when it comes to a situation like that with his children? How does he handle it? We'll see some more, all right? We'll see some more. So, um, now what lessons do we learn from here? Well, in the aspect of fathers as men, please don't give in. Please think very carefully. What are the implications? Being alone, definitely big no-no. Huh? Definitely big no-no. Actually, David, of all the persons who have committed adultery, should have remembered a lot of things about himself. Can you trust the flesh? Um, what can go wrong? What went? What judgment he faced? Right? But he was a I would say maybe a father that gave in too easily. Now, the next, let, let's look at the next situation. Now, then we know that Amnon raped the sister, and what happened after that? Now, can we read verse 21? Chapter 13, verse 21. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. Now, do you remember if David did anything more? That's it, you know, in the Bible. That was it. He was angry. He was upset, very angry. But that was all. That was all. Now, who remember those who are familiar with this story? Now, look at now. Please look at verse twenty. Let's read verse twenty together. Uh, verse twenty. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, "Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold thy hold thy, now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother." Regard not this thing, so Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Now we know Absalom, so Absalom, Tamar's immediate brother, right? He just tells Tamar, all right, Tamar, you keep quiet. All right, you keep quiet. He's your brother. You just bear with this. Now, was Absalom planning anything? Claude, do you know the story? What happened later? Absalom was plotting. He said, you don't make any noise, don't make any fuss. In his mind, he was already thinking, I'm going to take revenge for you. Now, Absalom loved Tama very much as his real sister. Right? In fact, later, you know, Absalom will have a daughter and Absalom calls her daughter Tama. Right? Absalom loves Tama very much. And Absalom was already going to plot to take revenge. By the way, you know the consequence of sin? David should not have married multiple wives, right? He did. Now, all these problems are happening. So the judgment has begun. By the way, men, don't think that we sin against God and then life goes on. Judgment begins. Consequence of sin starts, the, the, the wheel starts to turn. There are consequences. It's not that God is wicked and He loves to punish you. Consequences by itself will occur. Right? So all this sin will happen. God already warned him. Now, what did... What, now, Amnon, Absalom started to plot in his heart and again goes to daddy. All right? Goes to daddy. Now, can we read um, verse um, 23? I'll read to you, uh, verse 23. And it came to pass after two full years... You know why God said fool, right? Is this is how long Absalom was simmering in anger and plotting after two full years in verse 23 that Absalom had sheep shearers and so on and so on. So Absalom began to say, I will invite all the king's son come together to this sheep shearing ceremony, a festival, celebration. It's common, they, they used to have that. But he plot and planned for two years and organized to have all the children come. Now, let's read together. Huh? Now, what happened? Um, verse 24, um, all the way to 28. Let's read together, 24 to 28. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, thy servant has sheep shearers. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said unto Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all now go lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him more. Pressed him. Howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Then saith Absalom, 
If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him, that he let Amnon and all the king's son go with him. And Absalom had commanded his servant, saying, Mark ye now, when, Absalom, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not, have, I not, have not I commanded you, be courageous and be valiant. Now look at David again, same situation. Suspicious. Do you think David was suspicious? Colin? Ah, do you think David was suspicious? He was. How do you know? Yeah, why? why? Now, David, when. Now, these ship sharing are quite common, all right? These events. But straight away, King David will say, No, no, no. Let's not all go together. As a father, there is some suspicion already. But he press and press. Then the king said, No, no, no. You want to go? You go. All right? You have my blessing. And then verse 26. He said, okay, if, if you don't go then, let my very specific mm. brother Amnon. Now, David already was suspicious. And this would tell him already something is up to no good. But notice this word that the Bible keeps repeating. Press, press, press. Same, press. When someone keeps pressing you, keep pressing you. As a father, your child keeps pressing you. You mustn't give in. Now we know he gave in and then what happened? Well, exactly, Absalom went ahead and executed his plan and killed. And killed the brother. That is what happened. Now, we can see a trend by now. All right? We can see a trend by now. What kind of father is David? Well, one day you might be a father. We say, one, well, I may not be a father, I may not get married. But still, when people keep pressing you and you know something is, is, is amiss. Now, David is a kind of father that tends to give in, right? He tends to give in. Now, I'm not saying uh, your, your child say, Daddy, can I go to the playground? And he's all innocent. The child wants to go to the playground and play. No, I must be not a father that cannot give in. Everything cannot give in. No, you cannot go anywhere. Daddy, I won't go to the toilet. No, I cannot give in. <laughs> all right? This is a case where you know it's something suspicious. All right? And especially in this situation, they will press and press and press. It's tiring, right? It gets tiring. Fathers, real? Do you experience that? The child keeps, Daddy, why? Daddy, why? The favorite word, why? Why? They say, why? Why? It's always that why until you get worn out. So you just cannot get worn out uh, unless, um, unless you're willing to let all these things happen. Now, actually, before I forget that, uh, um, chapter, 13, chapter 13. Now, look at verse 1, right? Amnon loved. Loved her. Amnon loved her. And then verse 4. Amnon loved Tamar. Now, Benedict, oh, okay, new visitor, Benedict. The Bible keeps saying that Amnon loved Tamar. Comment on that. What do you think is this love? It was lust. It was lust, understand that? It's very clear. After he raped her, he dumped her. All right? Now, why do you say, then, then why does not the Bible, why does the Bible use the word love? Yeah, still Benedict. Why does God repeatedly use the word love? Because your children will come, right? Daddy, he loves me. Dad, mommy, daddy, I love him. Hmm? Why do you think the Bible used love? Probably what Amnon said. It's probably what Amnon said. Um, well, in verse 1, Amnon didn't say anything. It was a commentary from God. Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Yeah, Amnon said, I love her. Amnon did say, but before that, God said, Amnon, the son of David, loved her. What do you think? Uh, that's what he believed, right? That's what Amnon believed for sure. But that's what Amnon believed, and God already know is, is lust. But why did God keep saying love, love, love? Why? Howard, why do you think so? 
<laughs> oh, both sons looking at you like that. <laughs> so, Daddy, we want to know why too. <laughs> we want to know as well. <laughs> why do you think? Now, I struggled with this when I first read it, you know. It's like, but this is not love, but God keeps using the word love. Not sure, huh? Okay, those with grown up daughter John. <laughs> Why, why, you say, why does God use, God's commentary was Tamar, uh, whose name was Tamar and Amnon the son of David, loved her. And not only that, no, you, I tell you, God even says this further. Um, let's read verse 15. Then, verse 15 together, Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And I'm not said until arise and be gone. See, God just repeatedly used love. All the hatred he had for her was greater than the love he had for her. Now, John, this one, uh, this passage is very useful for you. <laughs> Once you know the answer, you, it's very useful. How? Why did God keep saying love? Why do you think so? Okay, those with daughters, who's next? Uh, Adrian, why? God knows that the word love is going to be um, misused in the future. Correct. Because God, in this sin, God already knows it's lust. But God will keep using that word. Why? To show that men will keep saying love, right? Next time your daughter say, Daddy, he loves me. Then you say, come, come, read this passage together. <laughs> huh? Ah, this is love, you know? God purposely used that word to show this is how the boy will say, love, love, love. This is how you will even think that it is love, but it is not. All right? So God uses this word cynically. Understand that? God is not saying it was love when he uses that. It's when we read it, it will, it will make us realize this is not love. So John, useful, this passage. Next time our daughter says, he loves me, you know, daddy, he loves me. <laughs> I love him too. Then say, better check, love or lust? Huh? Now, obviously, um, he it was us. That's all. That's why he dumped her after that. Okay, so just in case I forget. Now, so, Father, don't be so easily taken. The boy loves my daughter. Guys, don't be so naive in your own heart also. I love her. Check first. Is it really love or is it lust? Okay, so you, you are interested in this girl. Check in your heart. Is it love or is it lust? Now, I'm not saying there's no attraction. Now, you cannot... I'm not saying... I always say it doesn't mean you must find the ugliest girl is the ugliest one. Or, okay, there's no lust. Then I chase her, right? <laughs> okay, it's not like that. Okay, there will be some um, attraction, obviously. But be very careful, all right? Uh, you can, Adrian, I hope you don't mind sharing. I hope you don't mind me sharing. I remember when we were talking about all this, and then Adrian was saying... He, in his mind, he was... Going to, he was pursuing um, Huiling and then he wrote down on our famous spreadsheet, right? The Excel spreadsheet, check all the criteria. And he said, sometimes when I close my eyes, I can't even remember her face. Do you remember you say that? It's, how does she look like? Uh, still cannot. It, uh, how does she look like? But the character is very clear. Uh, then at least you know it's not just physical. I'm not saying there, must be, there cannot be any attraction. Sometimes it starts with that. But evaluate, right? So... In your case, you only remember character, cannot remember face. How the face look like? Thankfully, you married the right person. <laughs> in the mind, that, oh, but it was another person. <laughs> so it, then you know in your heart. So be careful. So fathers, when all this love, this word thrown around, guys, when you're thinking of a girl, all this word love that's thrown around, be very careful, right? Especially fathers, watch, um, evaluate. You are put over there to protect. David should have protected Tamar, hmm? as well as Amnon from, from going any further. Now, so did David do anything? Um, David did nothing. David did nothing. Hey, sorry, I forgot to answer question number two. Now, should I ask? Now, uh, maybe Uncle Kun Siong. Uncle Kun Siong. Now, if you were David and then you found that Amnon rape Tama. What would you have done? You're very angry. What would you have done? You're King David. 
Will you have done anything? Need to do something, right? Need to do something. Huh? Of course, must do some punishment. Of course, must do some punishment, correct? But the Bible just records he was angry and that's it. He did nothing. Now this one thing, I, sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot to answer question number two. What, how should he have handled the issue? Kenny, how should he have handled the issue? Uncle Kun Siong said he should have done something. Deal with it according to the law. Right or not? He was facing an issue. Right? He was facing an issue. Rape has occurred in his house. But he didn't do anything. Hmm. Joshua, why do you think he didn't do anything? Alright, so I asked, why do you think David failed here? Um, he felt that, Joshua said that, he felt that he himself had done it before, right? He was guilty of this sin, of fornication, extramarital, sleeping with someone who's not your wife. So that may be one reason why now he finds it very difficult, right or not? Now, Caleb, eh, ah, uh, ask Caleb already. Oh. Sujin, now if you committed a certain sin before, and then you see someone commit the same sin, how should you handle the issue? Alright, you're, you're a manager in your company, and then you embezzled money, the company caught you, and then, but they forgave you. Right, they, they forgive you and say, okay, make restitution, you made. And then you found an employee embezzling. How? What would you do? So you must make report still so that justice is served. But justice was not served on you, you know. They let you go. Children, you let him go. Um, it would depend. I, I guess it would depend on the uh, on the on the boss <coughs> sort of action that he chose. You're the boss, ah. You're the boss. You will let go. So I say I was let go, so I should let him go. Shoot. David say, I committed this sin. But this one very easy to say no lah, because you know, David committed this sin, he didn't, he didn't go and deal with it, he was just angry and then a whole lot of problems happened, right? So how? If you face a situation like that where you are, this is about men handling issues, uh, you have to handle this issue. So how? Very difficult, right? Vincent, what would you do? How would you handle this issue? So, um, I was a boss, but I became a man. Ah yeah, why you complicate it so much? <laughs> you you are you Okay, you, you are the boss. Right? You are the boss. You were caught embezzling money. Then the company caught you, confronted you, have a meeting, and after that they decide to forgive as long as you make restitution. Then later on, same you are the boss, you caught an employee doing the same thing. What would you do? Because Joshua just said. It's very difficult for him right now. And he just, how to scold my son? My son said, Daddy, you also did the same thing. Right? Well, first of all, men, husbands, fathers, do you realize moral authority is very important? If you sin, you have to realize the implications, you know, in your home and all that. Very difficult. So now you're faced with this implication. Or maybe fathers, ah, all right? You you committed this sin before and then your daughter come, want to do this and then they did it. The same thing. Then how? How are you going to counsel them? <sighs> I also did that. Can't say anything. Uh. So what would you do, Vincent? Uh, well, he'll have to go through the same thing I did with the counsel. If he has not 
not done it yet, then I'll work against it. But if you've already done it, then you have to do it. You have to go through the same thing. Now, so we have to learn in handling difficult situations. We went, you went through the same thing. You faced the board, you let them handle the situation, and you were at their mercy, right? In your case, they happened to let you go. They could have also dealt with you, right? It's the same thing. You still need to make the same decision. You still need to go and do what is right. We cannot just say, handle this issue by, since I have no moral authority, I don't handle it. But of course, when you handle it, you handle it with, with compassion, right? Because you know you also have committed that sin before. You handle it with compassion, but you still need to do what is right. And that is the problem with the way David handled things. He got very angry. He didn't do anything. He just let it be. Now, what do you think would go through Amnon's, uh, Absalom's mind? Absalom, also his son, you know. My father did not do what is right. Correct? My father did not discipline Absalom. I will take things into my own hands since he's not going to do anything. And I know my father is like that. All right? Tama, you just keep quiet. I'll know what to do. I know daddy is not going to do anything. For two years, he plotted. Now, in these two years, actually, when David was angry, what should he have done? Just deal with the son according to the law. That's it. Remember, he was, was he just father? Caleb, uh, young Caleb. David was, he was a father here, right? But David was also a, he was also a king. He was also a king. Now, as men, we have to remember we have different positions, different roles. You are father, you are also a leader. You have to understand that when handling issues. David say, my own son, uh, just keep you in the family and cover it up. No, he's a king of the nation. You think the nation never hear this? The nation would know about it. And the nation would look at the king, didn't do anything about rape, just because he's his son, right? You know how difficult it is? But David, if he did something, if he did something, well, we can only guess, huh? if he did something, I think Absalom would not have gone this far. Absalom would have just... But, i ask you further, huh? Ellen. If, because of that, then, um, for example, if the son needs to be stoned to death, which is worse? The son stoned to death or just don't do anything? Why? Why just don't any, do anything is worse? Because he lost two sons. Because he lost two sons. Do you remember when you... Please remember when you don't handle things properly. If David handled it right, then Absalom would not have gone ahead to do this, right? Absalom didn't go ahead to do this and we know the story. Eh? For those who don't know, sorry, it's a spoiler. <laughs> In the end, Absalom died. Absalom died. Okay? Now, when handling issues, we have to put on our hats and handle things. You're a husband. If your wife do something wrong, they're sinful, what should you do? Cover up? Now, I'm not, they are personal sins. Huh? You don't have to, I come to church and I must announce and ask pastor to say on the pulpit, my wife did it, not that kind of thing, all right? But that, that needs to be dealt with. You need to deal with it. You can, I am my wife, then never mind. I am my, my, uh, my family member, then never mind. It will lead to other problems. Understand that? Put on the right hat. As a leader, do the right thing. And if you have done something, you know you're guilty of it. You cannot just say, then don't do anything about it. In this case, he faced God. And God says, you will not die, right? He faced God and God says, thou shalt not die. That's it. He should just leave it and let the cause of law to take proper route. In fact, in the Levitical law, there are ways to handle this problem. But David didn't do anything. Now, fathers, when you have one son or one daughter do something, you don't deal with it. When one son bully another son or bully another daughter, you don't deal with it. Please know, they will simmer in their heart because they feel that there's no justice at home. Understand that? Deal with it compassionately, rightly. 
but must deal with it. Don't just get angry and then that's it. That was David. And then now further. All right, so now um, question number three. Now, comment on how David handled Absalom's problem. You know, these are quite interesting have problem handling situation. Uh. Comment on how David handled Absalom's request. Comment on it. Okay, who else have I? Kenny, Kenny Chia. How do you think David handled Absalom's request? What do you think of it? What lessons do you learn? Next time Daniel keeps saying, Daddy, Daddy, la, one, one, one. Then you're very sleepy, you're very tired, and you're having a flu. Lord, no more energy to fight with Daniel, and he's bigger than you. <laughs> now how? Comment on David's hand- handling of Absalom's request. What do you think? Very easy to judge David. <laughs> okay, you think. Uh, Adrian. Adrian Ng. What do you think about the way he handled it? What's the problem? So number one, he gave in. Uh, because you know he has sinned. Why else do you think he failed? Why else do you think he failed? One is, yeah, he just feels, I've I committed this sin, uh, I don't do anything. And we learn, no, we still need to deal with it properly. Compassionately, know that we are also guilty of sin. Why else do you think David did not act? Uh, no, this one, oh, uh, okay. He did not ask, just openly, why do you want Amnon to be there? Is it? Uh, why do you want Amnon to be there? Okay, yeah. Then, then, uh, then Absalom just say, well, all the king's sons are invited. Amnon is another king's son. And they just keep going on. Hmm. What? Now, I think one of the problems with, with David, and it's easy to say about David, all right? I just want to say this. Huh? It's very easy to criticize David. And, and when we're in that situation, we need to learn. Not stand there and criticize David. Huh? We have to learn and say when we're in that situation. Um, question number three. Now, comment on how David handled Absalom's request. Now, David knew something was suspicious. As we read the passage, we already know. Now, when, when we suspect something is strange, parents, you cannot give in. Parents, you have to persevere. Friendship, the same. Huh? You have to persevere and just persevere. Your children may get angry at you. Your children may not talk to you. Now, recently, one parent came and said, my child don't want to talk to me already for two, three weeks. I said, what? Two, three weeks? I said, Pastor, can you please talk to my child? Two, three weeks. How would you respond if your daughter or your son, two, three weeks, don't want to talk to you? Get angry because you don't give in to him or her. How? Give you the cold shoulder. You still need to persevere when you know something is not right. And especially you know this is going to be very disastrous. You just have to persevere. Then let them be angry. Well, this parent just let the son be angry. And then say, Pastor, please help. Then counsel, then talk, then settle. Then things are fine. If you give in, there may be other problems. Understand that. Okay? Hey, by the way, do you, do you, when your children want to be alone, uh, you better be suspicious, you know, when they want to be alone. <laughs> well, if they genuinely want to be alone and do devotion and say, Daddy, can I read my Bible now and stop disturbing me and all that kind of thing, they're genuine. Uh, but when you say suspicious, why? Be very careful. Uh, you, know the, you know what they do, right, always? Daddy, go out, go out, go out, and then they want to look at certain things on your computer and all that, right? Do you see that, 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 that video? This, this, this child always said, Daddy, okay, okay, go out, go out. Then Daddy, go out. Then the child will go and turn on the lights. Then Daddy, come in again. Then the child will turn off the lights. Then after that, finally, the Daddy comes in. And then see, turn off the, she pretends sleeping. Turn off the light. Then, the, then after that, that's it. Then the child wake up and go and turn on the lights again. Then what happened? The Daddy was standing at the door. <laughs> in the dark. All right. What did the child do? Pretend to sleepwalk. 
children are seriously very, very... Um, they think of all these things, right? You, got to, you just got to know. Now, Absalom was plotting beautifully. All right? He knew exactly what he was wanting to do. Very difficult to handle situations like that, right? But I just hope that we'll persevere. Now, next, next one, <coughs> question number uh, four. Now, what, re- what were the repercussions that happened from, that occurred from David, um, the way David handled the issues with Amnon and Absalom? Now, we know Amnon, he failed, he gave in. He did not think carefully, he did not protect. And then, we had a rape occurring in the house. In the case of Absalom, we had, from there we had murder. Fornication to murder. Now, if you were David, Ignatius, if you were David, and then you see fornication, then murder. If you were King David, if you were David, what would go through your mind? Shock. <laughs> okay, shock, shock, sadness. But remember what sins did David commit? Fornication and after that, murder. Right? Now, all these things were happening. I just want to reinforce the other lesson that we learned. Be very careful not to sin. All right? Sinning is pleasurable, is nice at that moment. But please always think of David's life. Please always remember David's life. Young person, when single or married, think carefully. Now, all these things were happening. Um... Now, question number five. Now, how did David handle Shimei's cursing? Right? So now we say, ah, David failed very miserably um, as a king, as a father. Now, actually, this, um, now David now, actually, David did a bit better after Absalom's case. Uh, David pursued, the people pursued, Ab- Ab- verse, sorry, verse th- chapter 13, verse 34. Huh? Absalom fled. And so on and so on. Now, David um, did bring Absalom back. Eventually, a very long story. We will not go through that. He did bring Absalom back. Now, he brought Absalom back. Then in chapter 14, um, he told Absalom, all right, you can come back to the kingdom, but you stay in, what do you call that? Huh? Um, you go to house arrest. Stay in house arrest. So this time, David, he did something, right? House arrest. House arrest, so he did deal with it. But actually, what was he worthy of? Felix. Absalom killed someone. What is he worthy of, according to the law? He murdered. Huh? Then he should pay with his life, right? That was the, that was the law. But he did not. So he also did not execute what was needed. Why do you think so? Why do you think so, huh? Alex, why do you think so? Uh, because, he loved because I love my son. I love my son. Now, let me ask you this question. This is how David handled this issue. Caleb, when the other people killed King Saul, and he wasn't like purposely kill King Saul, no. It's like help King Saul to die. What did David do to them? Uh, and? And he executed capital punishment on those that touched the Lord's anointed, right? And he killed those people. This guy came and said, you know, I killed Saul. And he's so happy, right? He thought that by saying this, King David will reward him. Then he say, kill this man. He committed murder, right? But now his own son. You see, there is so many problems with the way he was handling all this issue. Why? Why do you think so, um, Deacon Joe? Why? Something to do with his hats. He's not executing his role as a king. Yeah, he executes his role as a father. I love my son. I try to protect my son. But he must remember he was king. And anyway, as a father, hey, father, if your son commits a certain crime, what do you do? Cover up? Conceal? No. As a Christian father, you need to deal with it properly. You have to, huh? by the way. You have to. Now, David as a father failed. David as a king failed. Very badly. Now, so, so he only put him a house arrest. Now, actually, I want to say this because afterwards I have another question. Now, look at chapter 
um, 13, verse 39. Can we read chapter 13, verse 39? And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. What is this saying? Now, Absalom ran away. After he committed, ran away. Committed murder, he ran away. Now, the, the Bible tells us that David was just in misery, right? He just kept longing, I, I wish to see my son. He ran away, I wish to see my son. He was in misery. But yeah, Amnon, well, for Amnon, he was very miserable too, but Amnon is dead. David says, there's nothing I can do. That's, it's happened already. But my living son, Absalom, he longed after him. In fact, he longed and longed and longed uh, until you know what happened. You look at chapter 14, verse 1. Now Joab, the son of Zerulah, perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom. His general, look at David, ah, whole day long face, whole day sad, very in, in total misery. Then his general, look at him and say, I got to do something. The general asked a lady to disguise herself, tell David a long story, all right, you go back and read it, tell David a long story, and in the end, David kind of understood, ah, I think Joab is behind this, right? Woman, woman, did Joab send you? They say yes. Joab sent me. Joab tried to do something to wake the king up. Understand that? Joab tried to do something to wake him up. Now, it's very sad, you know. He's a king, right? Until he's just in this, the way he handled things are, this thing is troubling me, and he was just mopping around, long face to the general, say, we cannot have a king like that. The king cannot go on like that. The nation will, will collapse, right? Same, right, in countries today. If a president every day like that, the nation will say, hey, the country will go down the drain, you know. Joab was getting worried already. Joab had to do something. Now it's the same, man, please, deal with issues, handle issues rightly. Your personal issues keep to yourself. Don't affect your, your, your duties at office, at work, in life, in church. Now, some, some men... It's wrong for me to say some men are worse than women because then women are bad. Now, now women tend to have to pour out and pour out and pour out, right? Not that it's wrong. She should talk. But men, when we have to lead, uh, king, he was a king, he has to lead. Now, if at home or in, at the office, when you have a problem and you're like King David, just mopping, just cannot handle things, cannot handle things properly. It's not the right way of living. Understand that? It's very sad when other Christians look at, wow, this Christian or something, he broke up with his girlfriend. And then his life at, at office was is such a bad testimony, like end of the world, that kind of thing. That was David. Just cannot handle it rightly until Joab have to step in to do something. Now, I, I say this because you need to watch how David handle problems in his life. Okay? Now, here's one issue. Later you see that he's going to exhibit the same behavior again. So you see, how David handles problem is family, uh, don't, never mind, relationship, right? Then also, when he's not happy, he, it just affects everybody. Hmm? Later we see the same thing. Now, how do you handle issue? Handle it rightly. Be a man, uh, they say. <laughs> right? Handle it. Manage it, because you are leading. People are looking at you. Now, next. Um, verse 5. Now, what about Shimei? So, now let's see David. So, David, because of this, um, actually, long story still. I got to tell you some of this so that you know the scenarios. And then you ask yourself, you're in his position, what would you do? How would you handle this? Now, we know the story. Um, Benedict, what's the story after this? What did Absalom do? He, he pursued David, all right? He tried, to, he tried to dethrone David, his own father. Huh? He tried to dethrone his own father. Um, okay, so, so what did he do? Okay, maybe see how smart you are, all right? You have friends like that, very, deci very, very deceitful friends, or you have children who play these kind of games with you. Now, what did Absalom do? Now, Absalom was, he ran away. King David said, okay, you can come back. Please come back. But he put him in house arrest. Now, then Absalom was in house arrest for some time. Now, what did he do? 
uh, please. But how, how um, Adrian, do you know how, Phil, abs, how, how Felix look like? Now, how the Epsilon look like? How the Epsilon look like? Very handsome. Very handsome. Yeah. Long hair, huh? We read, right? Verse 20, chapter 14, verse 25, let's read. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised. Uh, chapter 14, verse 25. There was not so much to praise as Absalom for his beauty from the sole of his foot even to the crown of his head. There was no blemish. Verse 26. And when he pulled his hair, for it was at every year's end that he pulled it, because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head and were 200 shekels after the king's weight. Wow, this is a vain man, you know. <laughs> All right? So this is the son of David. I don't know, maybe David said, Oh, I'm such a handsome son. You know, look like me. <laughs> you know, I just can't, can't bear to punish him. Sometimes you're like that, right? We laugh, but say, I am my, my daughter, I am my son. Just come back. Oh, so this guy is so look, good looking, and his hair was so thick that on his. Uh, some of us are losing hair, right? But this guy, wow, his hair never, doesn't lose hair so thick until he can weigh his hair. Every year he weighs his hair. See, this is how much hair I have. So it's this kind of character. Right, so it's very good looking and all that. Now, so he was, he was put on house arrest for two years. Now, you ask yourself, if you were in that situation, how would you handle this? Now, Absalom, verse 28, chapter, chapter 14, verse 28, So Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. So he said, house arrest, but two years I didn't get to see the king. Want to see his face also cannot. Now, he got very fed up, so to speak. Then he tried to get Joab to see him. Joab also don't want to see him. You know what he did, right? Joab also don't want to see him. So you see this kind of people, when he caused all these things, how are you going to handle this issue? Joab don't want to see him, so he go and send people to burn Joab's farms. You don't see me? General, you don't see me? I want to see my father. I want you to make an arrangement for me to see my father. You still don't want to make arrangement for me. Go and burn his farm. Until Joab got fed up. Say, okay, what do you want? I want to see my father. What's the point? What's the point, right? Now, verse 32, after he burned his field, Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I send unto thee, saying, Come, that I may send thee to the king, and say, Why am I come from Geshur? It had been good for me to have been there. Now let me see the king's face. And if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. Wow. So now the son say, I want to see my father's face. What happened? Verse 33, so Joab came to the king. So, so Joab gave up. Joab said, all right, king, your son wants to see you. Okay, your son wants to see you. So he made the arrangement. Chapter 15, verse 1. Uh, no, then he managed. Chapter 14, verse 33. And he went to see the king, fell down on his face on the ground, and kissed Absalom. And the king kissed Absalom. Reunion. Such a happy thing, right? How will you handle the situation? Um, now, see after this, uh, immediately in chapter 15, verse 1, immediately after he see the king, so you, you ask, uh, are you wise enough to handle this? He see the king, he bowed to the king, the king kissed him, all good, then go away. Immediately after that, chapter 15, verse 1, and it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Immediately after that situation, Absalom went to the city, sit at the gate and tell people, come, come, come. Any problems, come and see me. I will help you. Hmm? And then what did he say? And then verse 4, chapter 15, verse 4, let's read together. Absalom said, moreover, oh, that I will make a judge in this land, that every man which has set suit or might cause might come unto me, and I will do him justice. Now, not only that, look at verse 6. Let's read verse 6. <coughs> Uh, sorry. Verse 5. And it was so that any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance. He put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. Right, so this is the picture. Eh? The son asked to see the father. Now after that, he went to the city and said, hey, uh, I wish I was made judge in this city. I can help you. And then when people come and see him, see the king's son, right? So they want to take his hand to kiss the hand. Uh, you know, king's son, right? He said, no, don't kiss my hand. He shake their hand and grasp and grab and, and hug them. How do you feel? Huh? Prime Minister, you see the Prime Minister of formal handshake, 
bow, formal handshake. When he see you, Ignatius, ho, 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 hug you. How would you feel? Huh? Now he started to do that. Now let me ask you, what was happening? What do you think was happening? Eugene, what do you think was happening? Why did he want to see the father? He wanted to plot. But why must he see the father? Return back to the position first. Now, the whole kingdom will hear that, oh, King David receives back his son. Right? Means he has now... Now, Amnon has died, right? Amnon was the oldest son, right? Now, as far as we know, there was a son in between was never mentioned after that. Probably died when he was young. Then only Amnon mentioned. Then now Amnon is... Uh, Absalom. Absalom now will be next to the king's throne, you know? Okay? So Amnon, Absalom, handsome, smart, and himself very good looking, very fair outside, but inside very, very wicked. All right? So don't judge by the looks. Now, he knew that first of all, before he tried to dethrone the father, he needed to let the nation know, my father and I are reunited, I'm the oldest son. All right? And if I go to the city and say, you know, why don't you make me king? They won't, they won't query. But if as long as they know his house arrest, means David has rejected him. But now it looks like hey, maybe the, son, the father really wanted the son to start taking over. David is old, right? So Absalom was a very scheming person. When we handle issues, we have to be very wise, very careful, all right? Well, to be fair to David, I don't think he can foresee this. But when we look at all this, my point is this. Whenever you're faced with issues, be, uh, I'm not saying be super suspicious, right? But if someone has a track record of something, you think carefully. Okay, you think carefully. Although it's your own son. If he has a track record of certain things, like murder, <laughs> not murder, huh? such a severe thing, you better think carefully. Handle things very, very wisely. Pray for wisdom. As a father, as a head of the home, as a working person, handle things with wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Sometimes you really don't know. Like, would King David know? Very difficult, right, to know. Pray for wisdom. Pray for carefulness. When your children come, why does he want this? Now, anyway, so now Absalom, like... Um, like uh, Benedict said, Absalom's plan was to kick David out. Quite sad, huh? Kick David out. Actually, now you ask yourself, what did... Now, actually, he wanted to kill David. Because later on, he will plot with the David's advisor, Ahithophel. Ahithophel will say, I will go and kill, I will go and kill David alone. Don't worry, I will only kill David. And the rest of his seasoned soldiers, I will bring back to you and you will have a great army. Absalom say, good plan. Very scary, eh? Can you imagine? A son that's like that. Okay? So, yes, Benedict, you're right. He wanted to, he wanted David out of the way. He wanted David out of the way. Now, um, what did I want to ask you? Uh, now, so all these things happen, right? So David, now we see here, uh, chapter, chapter 15, Chapter 15, verse 13. And there came messengers to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. Now David immediately said, verse 14, let's read 14 together. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for we shall not escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us and spite the city with the edge of the sword. And then David took his servants and they, they left the city. Okay? Now, so David will be pursued. He is running, running. Now, now we see David handling another situation soon. Alright, so David, for the safety of his own people, now you do have to credit David, alright? So he did, he did not want a massacre. And he said, you want to dethrone me? I'd rather you do it than you kill the innocent citizens and have a civil war. So in that sense, David, in that sense, was, was um, sacrificial as a king. All right? he, he says, this is going to be bad for the city. Let's, let's leave. In, a, in other words, he cannot say, then let him be king. Understand that? But I'm not sure exactly do you think that's right. 
But David in his heart knew. Later on, he said, If God wants me to continue to be king, I will continue to be king somehow. But for now, this is going to be bad for the rest of the city. Let's go. Okay? So in a sense, David just leave, left it in God's hand. That's a good way of dealing things sometimes. sometimes. Leave it with God's hand. Okay, leave it with God's hand. So David had that faith. So he escaped. Now, this situation happens now. So you imagine you're David. Let me ask you how you will handle this. Some of you know, but some of you may not know the story. Now, as they, as they travel, there's this man called Shimei. Okay, can you read verse 16? Uh, chapter 16, verse 5 to verse, verse 9. Let's read together. And when King David came to Barum, behold, then came out the men of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. And he came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and all the servants of King David. And all the people that were all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei, when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou men of Belial. And the Lord had returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord had delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Verse 9. And said Abishai the son of Zeruiah <coughs> unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. Okay, so you are King David. How are you going to handle this situation? You are in a situation where people curse, bully, throw stones at you, say things that are totally untrue about you. Now, please look carefully. Eh? Verse 5. God says this man, Shimei, was of the house of Saul. It was the house of Saul. means King Saul, relative. Okay? Number one. Number two. Um, notice that God says in verse 6, who was with David? Verse 6. All the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. Mighty men, huh? Now remember, David has gone through many wars, right? By now, in other chapters we read, David has a group of men that are like kung fu masters. <laughs> All right? you, read their, you read their lives. All right? they, can, they can slingshot, I don't know how far this thing hit, very accurately split hair, that kind of thing. Not a joke. These are super seasoned um, soldiers. All right? Um, they are very powerful. They are very experienced. So all this, uh, God says, on his left hand and on his right hand. So you imagine, you're David. How, to handle, how will you handle this issue? Cursed by someone. And what did men curse him? He cursed him and throw stones. And say, verse 8, false accusation. The Lord returned unto thee the blood of the house of Saul. Was David, did David kill Saul? No. Was he a bloody man in Saul's house? No. In fact, after people killed Saul, what did he do? He killed people who killed Saul. Right? And he also made sure that he took care of Saul's descendants. Right? He did all the right things. False, totally false accusation while you're going through that. Furthermore, well, also of cursing, are you bloody man, you know, the God, is, God is returning all this thing on your head because you took away the kingdom from, from Saul and now your son take away the kingdom from you. You deserve it. All false. Did David deserve to be king? Yes. Who anointed David as king? God himself, right? God sent the... So everything is false. You're going through this and you're boiling. Would you be boiling? Left hand, right hand. Now, these people, I can just pick up a stone. <laughs> the man said, let me just take off his head from here. I can pull up my meat and then his head will be gone. When he said take off his head, he's literal, you know. These people can just slice off someone's head from a distance. No problem. He said, David, just let me do this. You know, we can do this. Left hand, right hand. So you have the ability to retaliate. You have this person cursing, throwing stones at you. You are king. And false accusation by someone like that. Joe, what would you do? Wait, choose a bad tempered person. Anyone bad tempered? Who's bad tempered? <laughs> Caleb, are you bad tempered? No. Okay, choose non bad tempered. All right, Caleb, very calm person. <laughs> <laughs> How would you have handled this situation? Uh, <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> I know my heart. You know, you know what he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we know what David did, right? Now, by and large, most people will handle this very badly, right? But David was, what did, how did David take all this? Now, how did David take all this? Let us look. Um, <clears throat> let us read from verse 11 to verse 13 together. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth from my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And David and his men went by the way. Shimei went on along the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. Well, non-stop, you know. You just keep walking and the guy just keeps throwing stones, kicking dust at you, keep cursing you. Now, um, all right. Uh, now he was a Benjamite. Okay, so be, uh, Benjamin, <laughs> you try to answer. Now, what was David? How did David handle all this? From here, in his heart. What did he say? Look at verse uh, eleven. What did he say? How did he handle this situation? Hmm? Very, calm. Very calm, but what, what made him calm? So good. What made him calm? <coughs> Bigger matters at hand. But he said something specific that allowed him to be calm. God is in control. Right? He said, the Lord had bidden him. The Lord made him do this. Alan, why did he say that? Why did he say, the Lord made him do this? Why do you think he said that? Someone keep throwing things at you, cursing you, bullying you, and they say, the Lord made him do that. <laughs> why would he think like that? Why would the other one say, let me just lop off his head? But why did David say, well, God sent him to curse me? Remember his sins and he remembered his sins and the consequence of his sin. God already told him, your house will be full of problems. There will be cursings, there will be adulteries, there will be murders. David knew all these things was because of his sin. Understand that? When he said God has bidden him, in his heart he knew this was from God. Just as God has said, the consequence of sin. Now, like Benjamin said, because, because he just know well, God is involved. Now, do you know how best when you need to handle situation is to bring God into the equation? David brought God into the equation. When we bring God into the situation and think about it, that is the only way we will handle things rightly. Now, if David would not be honest with himself and just say, wow, this guy, what is he doing? And David had all the power at his fingertips, all the men at his fingertips to go and take revenge for him. Why would he not do it? Now, my friends, when we handle issues in our life, sometimes we have to ask ourselves, is this because of my sin? We have to ask ourselves, why is all these problems happening that I need to handle it? Why are all these things happening to me? David was someone that very honestly knew this is from God. Would you know? I ask you, would you know? A Christian always knows. Why do you think so? Uh, Kenny, Kenny Chia, why do you think a Christian always, by and large, a Christian, if he's honest to God, he would know that this is a chastisement or this is not a chastisement? <laughs> Correct. The Bible says, I will send the Holy Spirit that will convict men of sin, right? If you have the Holy Spirit, you will know this is my sin or this is not because of sin. 
Now, I'm not saying every time you have trouble uh, that you need to handle, a lot of problems to handle, it's always sin. Understand that. We also know God allows diverse trials and temptations to refine our faith, right? Sometimes God just allows it. But David was very honest. Now, how do we handle problems is when we are honest, we ask ourselves, is this because of my sin? Why is this always happening in my family? Why is this always happening in my workplace? I turn out at workplace, everything is just going wrong. Everything that can go wrong, goes wrong and more. Why? Well, sometimes it's not. But in your heart, I believe you will know. Hmm? I know. <laughs> I remember when I was a young Christian, I experienced this. I took Holy Communion when I know I was not supposed to. I did not want to repent of a certain sin, but it's too embarrassing not to take it. Because people are looking at me, oh, you didn't take, oh, you got sin. You don't, which you don't want to repent of, don't want to confess on the spot, don't want to let go of it. I repent later, later. Huh? I took and something happened to me. Immediate thought when that thing is happening was, this is my sin. The Holy Spirit will let you know one. God won't chastise you without you letting you know. Right? If not, no point, right? Daddy, when you... When you punish your children, you just keep punishing, punishing, punishing. Say, I'm telling you, this is why I'm punishing you. Blood will let you know. Right? Dave, and the difference in David handling this now is, he just said, let the Lord. In fact, what he, he say further, look at chapter 16, verse 12. Now he say, it may be that the Lord will look on my affliction, and the Lord will requite me good for this cursing all day long. So he say, well, I just submit myself to God's chastisement, and I just hope that with this, this chastisement will pass. Because I submit to God and let Him chastise me and bear this, the Lord will know that I've learned my lesson and He will requite me good. Alright? So sometimes you'll be like, don't fight. Don't handle problems by fighting God. Sometimes you just know and just say, Lord, I submit and I hope that in your mercy, that I've learned, I hope in your mercy, then requite me good. I won't retaliate. David knew if he retaliated, now did David have the right to retaliate? He's king, you know. Again, just now I emphasize, was any of the accusations there true? None of it. Would David commit any sin in retaliating? No, right? But he knew this was chastisement from God. Now, I'm again not saying it. Now, this I realize I must always clarify because after I say something, then everyone go away and think, say, Pastor said that. Now, doesn't mean that when people keep doing wicked things to us and we have a right to go and report, huh, we say, no, David didn't do that, so I don't do that, I don't do that. No. Right? Sometimes we know it's a chastisement, we just say, okay, I take it. But it does not mean a Christian always say, no, I cannot go and tell my boss, your, right, your, your, your colleague keep... keep uh, um, Causing problems to you at church? No, I don't do anything. So uh, Paul also um, appealed to Caesar, right? Okay, but in this case, when you know, just let Lord, I know this is what you do. I accept it, okay? So how do we handle situation? Bring God into the equation. That's what David did. He thought in relative, in why is this happening? He understood in his heart and he accepted it. Okay, he was calm. Hmm? So Benjamin is right, he was calm. Because he knew this was what God allowed. Now, so that's question number five. Number six. All right, I think I won't. Matthew Boshev, I'll just do very quickly. Since we're doing David's life, I've got to finish it. Now, Matthew Boshev, servant. Now, David in the trouble, all this trouble. So, men, realize this. Huh? You can be facing a lot of problems in life family problem, people at work giving you problem, all sorts of problem, right? Then you have new problems. Sometimes you feel that way. I know some husbands say, you know, i got so much problem at work, then I go home, another set of problems waiting for me, right? And then outside, another set of problems, lots of problems. Now, in the midst of all this problem, remember Matthew Boshev, King so, uh, um, uh, Jonathan's son? Mephibosheth. Now, Mephibosheth, King David gave him land, right? To care of him. And the servant also. The servant, is it? The servant take care of Mephibosheth because he was crippled. Now, Mephibosheth, in all this, his servant came to King David. Now, verse chapter 16. Now, so you see how you said, no. You are facing family problems. 
you're facing life problems, you're facing work problems, you're all sorts of things. People are unhappy with you, bullying you. Then someone comes to you. Matthew Bosheth's uh, servant, chapter 16, verse 2, Ziba. All right? Now, Ziba comes with food and all. Oh, King David, you're running away. Look, I bring food to you. I, uh, you know what happened to Matthew Bosheth? Ah, so sad. Matthew Bosheth now take the side of your son, also against you. Okay? In the midst of a lot of problems. And now more things come. And then King David, what did King David do? Verse 4, let's read together. Then saith King Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertaineth unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba saith, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in the sight of my Lord, O king. So David heard, What? I was so kind to Mephibosheth. And now Mephibosheth, take the sight of my son. Tell you what, I'm still king. You go and tell me for sure, all the land that I gave to him is yours. Hmm? Hmm. Oh, cameraman, Ichum. Was it true? Was Messi, did Messi Bosheth defect? No, later on we know. Messi Bosheth, when King David was restored, Messi Bosheth went to King David and said, I'm so glad you're back. David was still angry at him. Hmm. Then say, they say, no, it's a lie. My servant Ziba lied. It's not true. He just won the land. I tell you what, King, to prove to you, I'm not even going to ask back the land. Remember, Matthew Bosheth is what? Crippled, huh? He got no means of making a living. He just say, let my servant take all the land. That's all I care. As long as King, you are safe, that's all I care. So Matthew Bosheth was genuine. How do you know it's genuine? Oh, king, as long as you're safe. Can you please ask Matthew Boshev to return some land to me? <laughs> he didn't say that. Let him have it. It doesn't matter to me. I starve to death. I have nothing. Never mind. As long as king, you are safe. Now, it was false. Now, let me ask you. When you're in the middle of problems, family problems, work problems, people causing all sorts of things in your life, and you face situations where your child or your friend comes, hey, you know this and that, how would you handle things? Um, uh, Vincent, you, want, you wanted to be air traffic controller, right? Air traffic controller is like, well, also think exploding around you, you still must be very calm and make the right decision. Now, David just heard and he said, go, take all the land, go. How to be not like that? Now, when you're in trouble, it's very easy, you know, man. We have problems at home, we have problems at work, we have all sorts of things. Your child comes to you for decisions. Or someone comes and tells you, whispers something to you. We have to handle things always with objectivity and carefulness. Cameraman, what would you have done if you were in David's situation? Someone after your own son after your life, you know, it's not, not like a stranger after your own life. Very good. When we're handling issues, especially in the midst of anger, pressured by all sorts of problems, not even related to this issue, would you be like Ichu? Very calm. Fact checking. <laughs> not so easy, right? When you're facing all these things. But I think we have to learn from here. David made a very bad um, decision. And it was a major decision. Is it a major decision? It is a major decision. To take away someone's land and give it to someone else, just from hearsay. Sometimes in life, now especially those who are working, right? Same, right? You, you're sick, you're tired. Pastor gives you so much work to do. <laughs> that must finish by tomorrow. You need to put up the poster. And then you go to work, your friends accuse this, accuse that, and you have to make some decision at work. Or at home, your wife comes to you, you know, uh, daddy, uh, does your wife call you daddy? And somebody, daddy, uh, you know, uh, these things happen and all that. What are you going to do? You react. That's how we handle problems, how we react. Men, we have to... Now, if we react, uh, things will go wrong, you know. We are the men. You are the father, you are the, you are the leader. At work, if you are, you, are, you are in charge of something, 
what you decide have very serious implications. Don't just because of anger and make a big decision. We have to learn to ask, think. Now, sometimes I know the wife says, ah, my husband takes forever to decide on something. They get very frustrated. Right? Sometimes the husband says, no, I really need to think. I remember one wife said that. But actually, after that, every time his decision is the best. Yeah? And sometimes now, I want to say this. Your friends or your wife, or girlfriend, or girlfriend, oh, I just have girlfriend, can have very Im big impact on how you handle things. I want to say again, huh? the people that can have very big impact on how we handle things it can be our wife, or someone in church, or someone who come and paint a picture. Now, men in handling issues, remember David's situation. Be very calm. Be very objective. Fact, fine, ask. Now, sometimes I have to do counselling. Uh. I can tell you I'm boiling inside, you know. Really very angry. Uh. But I, I still need to sit there and say, bite my tongue, bite my tongue. Listen. Right? The Bible says what? Be swift to listen. Be swift to hear. Slow to talk. Very effective. So like David, we are very quick to say, huh, right? Your wife can tell you, you know, uh, in church, uh, the man, he didn't smile at me, you know. <laughs> huh, you know. Also, very quick to react. In handling issues as men, especially if you're head of, no, especially if you're a husband, um, or a leader in church, or working person at the place of work, be very careful not to react wrongly. And then go make a decision. Be very calm. Think. Now, this is the situation where church can have big fights because someone says something to you and then you react. I keep saying, right? The next phase of attack in our church, I believe, is going to be the congregation. People are going to cause problems. You have to, as men, be very objective. You hear things, you calmly evaluate, bring it up, and solve it calmly. Don't go and kick a big fight. Okay? Satan will win. You will fall into traps. When you listen to your children argue, they come and they tell daddy this, daddy that, you be very objective. Take that toy and give it to him. Hmm? Hmm? But actually, that toy really belongs to her. Then mommy comes, that toy belongs to her? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> very embarrassed. I want to say also, people closest to us can have very great influence on us making wrong decisions. They can manipulate you. They may not intentionally manipulate you, like in this case, it was intentional. Ziba was just out there to manipulate David. They will look, this is the best time to say this and do this, and I will get him to do that. Understand that? Okay, I say this without reservation because my wife also said this. <laughs> Alright? Women can make men do. This is men and ladies. Session. Women can make you do things that they want without you knowing that it is you're doing what she wants. <laughs> but actually, you're doing what she wants and you're so convinced you're doing it because it is what you want. You get it? <laughs> That's the reality of life. I learned that from a colleague. I went back to ask Sharon, she says, very true. And she always said that to me. All right? I'm glad because she's very honest. All right? She said that to me, and she always has to check her own heart also. Okay? So be very careful. I've known many men, uh, they are so convinced this is what they want to do. <laughs> but it wasn't. But it's position and all, like Ziba is positioning. It all looked like you wanted to make that decision. See, a lot of things, a lot of problems is when anger, situations, in David's case, son-father relationship, all those kind of things. Right? Handling issues, I hope so far you see, is very complex, especially when loved ones are involved, especially a lot of pestering and, and so on. Okay? So how would you handle it? Learn. Handling situations, be very careful.
What else do I want to say about this? So really ask yourself, uh, men, when you make a decision about something or do something, really ask, is this what someone else wants me to do or is this really what I believe is objectively right for the family, right at the place of work, right in a relationship or whatever? Be wise. Be very wise. You don't have that wisdom. It's very difficult to be a father, to be a husband, to be a boyfriend, to be a, um, a, a, a manager at their workplace or team leader. Very difficult. You see in David's life over and over again, and it could be close friends. Your close friend at work, they will have a big influence at, on you on how you perceive decisions made in the company and so on. All right, so Christians, be careful. Yes. Do you have examples? Do I have examples? Yeah. Not on video. <laughs> Do I have examples? Some too, too, too difficult to say. Um, anyone have examples you want to share? Women can encourage the uh, person to propose to get married. To get married? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me think. We, Means? Like, if a person is in a courtship, you know, the man might think, is this the time that I'm, yeah, I should propose, but actually, oh. they were okay. positioned. Okay, okay. <laughs> what sublimal message? <laughs> but, so you're saying, the guy really thought that I'm making the decision who want to marry you, is it? Yeah, sublimal message, maybe, I don't know. Once in a while, a magazine is left there with rings. <laughs> Once in a while, magazine there about marriage, I don't know. Then all the while, actually, you know, um, um, do you know that there are, now I'm not saying our wives and our, uh, our girlfriends are magicians, uh, do you know that, that people, have you, have you known, and I've, I've gone through this myself, someone can talk to you and at the end make you choose, do and say exactly what the person wants you to do? Have you done that? I've experienced that, you know? Where we, where we were doing training and then said like, this is how marketing works. All right? We can say certain things, do certain gestures, imply certain things, and in the end, you will say those things. It works, you know. It's manipulation of perception. Understand that? In the end, you actually say everything you want. They already know what they want you to say. And they can guide you to that decision. Very effective, so powerful. These people are very scary to be with. Yeah, so that is how. And this is what Ziba was trying to do. Positioning, positioning, positioning. And yeah, in the end, you think that I'm the one who say, I want this. Okay? So be very careful. Now, you got one example. Already. Husbands, are you, are you awake? Have you been through that before? Hmm? Have you... In the end, realize that well, that is not what I wanted, and then it happened. Huh? Okay, so be very careful. Um, be wise in handling situation. Anyone else? Other situation? Caleb, at work. Anyone manipulate you into doing something? Mm, not aware yet. <laughs> How long have you been in the company? Long time. Seven years. You already been manipulated. <laughs> no kidding. Right. Good. Christians should not keep thinking of changing job, right? The Lord put you there, just work. Don't keep thinking of more money, more this, more that, and keep changing job. Now, um, so I'm kidding, huh? I'm not saying you've been manipulated into staying, right? Um, all right, so Shimei, uh, you have people like that. Oh, sorry, um, uh, Ziba, you have people like that. Now, very quickly, huh? Now, we know the story. Uh, Amnon um, rebelled. Amnon, uh, but somehow David managed to plant spies back into the city. They, they relate the plan back to David. David got the upper hand, and then the people got back into position, and, and David's people start to pursue Absalom. Right? David people start to pursue Absalom, and David um, kept telling the people, please be kind to my son. Uh, can you chapter 18? Verse 5, let's read together. And the king, chapter 18, verse 5, and the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, 
Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captain's charge concerning Absalom. Why do you think God said that? Howard, you look at this verse. They go back into the city, then David say, Deal gently for my, for my sake, the young man, even with Absalom. And then God added this. God gave this commentary to us. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captain's charge concerning Absalom. Why think God gave that revelation to us? About how David was handling the situation. When all the people heard what David said to all the captains about be, be nice to my son, nah. be gentle to him. As a father, maybe he could say that, but he should not say that as a king. You're right. Now, if God didn't include that, I'm nothing much to think, okay? But God wants to say that, you know, all the people heard the king said to the captain, all the captains, if you find my son, be gentle with him. Now, what did Absalom just did? Hmm? Absalom caused all of them to leave the city with his soldiers. All these people have to leave you know, overnight, get up and go. Pursuit after David, plan to kill David, kill them also. And now, now David got back into position. All these men who went, was willing to leave with David, did not defect with David, willingly become nothing with David, to be on the run with David. And now he say, be nice to my son, uh, who did all these things to us, but be nice to him. Uh. Everyone heard it. The whole, all these people heard it. What would they be thinking? What do you think? Hey, pay. No, pay. I didn't know you were here. Pay. What do you think these people would be thinking? Why did God say, and they all heard what David said about Absalom to all the captains? What do you think they'll be thinking? Say again. You're not dealing with the situation fairly. Now, these people saw David say, How dare you touch the Lord's anointed? For doing that, I will kill you, right? Is David the Lord's anointed? He is. He is. And here, he's saying, Be nice to him. It's a very big double standard. Understand that. In handling situations, David's problem was always he could not wear. He don't know which hat to wear. And he always wear the wrong hat. He needed to deal with his sons rightly. Did he learn lesson after lesson after lesson? No. Still the same way of dealing with it. Alright? So men, when we make decisions, learn. Learn, learn. So now he still did not learn. Now in fact, they pursue, uh, they pursue, they pursue. Then finally, they caught, caught Absalom. Now how did they kill Absalom? Who knows? Who remember? <laughs> Eugene. How did Absalom die? He got stuck in the tree because of his hair. Running on that. <laughs> then the branch there, his, his beautiful long hair got hung there. Hung like a puppet. What's the lesson? Don't be so vain. Don't keep long hair. His vanity. His vanity was the one. God mocked him. You know? He got hung by his hair. Better to have been bota, right? So those of us who are losing hair, it's okay. <laughs> now, hung there and then... They killed him. And what did David do? Ah, now we come back to the same thing. Now, look at chapter 19. Chapter 19, verse 1. Let's read together. And it was told, Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. Again, same thing, right? Is it the same behavior? What happened when Amnon died and Absalom ran away? Oh, they cry, 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 cry. He did not know what had to put on. He was king. He needed to do what was right. Same, you, you are father and you are also head of the home. You are leader. You must be objective. You must deal with things very object, very carefully and rightly. If you are a boss at work, it can be your close friend, can be your best friend, can be your own brother at work, own sister at work, or in church, the same. You must remember that we all have different heads as men. Be very careful. All right? Just because you have brothers or sisters in church, you close one eye. You take their side. Or your father or 
child at, at work, uh, in, in church, same. Now, again, cry all day long. Verse 2, And the victory that day was turned into mourning. It was a victory. The whole nation dare not celebrate. King is very sad because son died. Cry. So no one dared to celebrate. Now, what did Joab say to him? Verse 6, let's read together. In that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends, for thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants, for this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all we had died this day, then you have been pleased thee well. <laughs> Joab went out. It looks like huh, all of us die uh, and your precious son live. You don't even care about the rest of the people. Then you'll be happy. King, go and wash yourself. You have a nation to run. That's his point. Right? So sometimes you have a family to run. At work, you have a, you have a job to do. In church, same. Now, so we quickly come and then that's it. All right? Now, actually, uh, I go further. Uh, because I can't leave this to the next day, it'll be kind of hanging. Number question number one. How did David handle Sheba's rebellion? I ask you. Now, who is Sheba? Well, why I bring this up, I want to paint to you David's life of consistent inconsistency. <laughs> okay? Now, when it came to Sheba, so David came back, right? <clears throat> David came back. Look at verse chapter 20, verse 1. Let's read together. And there happened to be there a man of Belial whose name was Sheba, the son of Bikri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part. What? So this guy said, We don't want to follow David. No, David got in place. We don't want to follow David. And what did David say? Verse 6, And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba, the son of Bikri, do much harm than Absalom. Take thou now thy Lord's servant and pursue after him, lest he get fenced cities and escape us. You see the big um, inconsistency in the way he deal with things? When his son pursue them, don't do anything. Please take care of my son. When Sheba say, we are not going to, when Sheba rebelled against David, what did David say? Get all these um, Kung Fu Pugilist specialists, huh? go and chase Sheba, kill him. Because he rebelled against us. It's going to be worse than Absalom. When we deal, okay, so I leave it as that. Do you see big inconsistency? Because of relationship, friendship? Now, Question 9 and 10, then we are done. What roles did David hold? In what ways did David fail? <clears throat> in how he handled issues. What roles? He had multiple roles. Father, king, right? There's a problem. It, no, there's a problem. The problem is, he's not clear. Men, the same. We must be clear we have different roles. Be clear about your roles. Be objective. Why do you think he's failed? Relationship, partiality. God says, do all things without partiality. <coughs> At home, the same. <coughs> Don't love one child more than the other. At work, the same. Don't have favoritism over one, one employee, one colleague after, over another. When there are problems in church, don't take the side of your children or your wife. I say again, huh? when there's problem in church, don't take, <coughs> let's say it this way, your first reaction is not to take the side of your husband or wife. But what I'm not saying is, your first reaction is to assume your wife and your children are wrong. Right? Don't go to the other extreme. Your first reaction is, <coughs> now you must wear the hat of a church member. Understand that? Better have a church member and you must be objective. You took a vow not to cause problem in church, right? Then be objective and be very careful. Fact finding, listen, be objective. Now, some men are the other way. You know, Some men will always blame their children and their wife. That's the whole problem. 
Then your wife and children will say, wow, it's always us. So also cannot. Right? But some men will be always, in the name of love, protect. Now, we have had churches split because of this. Church leaders. Children running committees. Something go wrong. Immediately, the church leader took the side of the children without doing much for funding. And even in fact, funding will keep protecting the children. And then the members, just like here, they all heard what the king said to the captains. People will see. Church split. Hmm? Be objective. Handle things very carefully. <clears throat> I'm not saying we don't love our wife, don't love our children. But be very objective. So hand, men handling situation. When there's a situation, we have to step up to handle it and not be passive. David was often passive. Okay? But handle it rightly. So we have many hats, right? Church member, father, committee member, committee lead, husband, individual. So many hats. But in all, be objective. Okay? David failed in this consistently. That was the problem. Um, so question 10, I just answered. Why do you think he's failed? Partiality, relationship, feeling personal hurt. I treated Matthew Boshev so nice. How can he do this to me? So jumping to conclusions. Now I'll ask you last question. Huh? Okay, we use last question as a discussion group. Okay, here, 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 because it's nine o'clock. Now, what is a strong man then? What is a strong man? We always say church must have strong men. Then the wife goes, say, husband, you must be strong man. They say, I must be strong man. What's a strong man? Vincent, those that can carry all the chairs in the cafeteria. What's a strong man? A just man. Because we learn from here. Now, a strong man, please think carefully. Please know this. Uh, when I say the church must have strong men, I'm not saying strong men are people who are very vocal, hmm? who are leading Bible studies, who are committee leads, um, who are always very, very obvious. Then anyone who needs anything, ah, is this person. Does it mean strong man? Was King David king? King of his king. He's very prominent. He makes decisions. He leads, right? But we see here, can we consider David a strong man? No, he was not. He was a very weak leader in these situations. A strong man is someone who in a situation can handle things very objectively, very impartially, very justly. That is a strong man. A strong man is not one, okay, we always do family devotion. I'm a strong man. That's it. It's much more than that. Of course you have to do those things. But please don't think that just because to be a strong man, I must be a prominent, vocal, aggressive person in church. That is not what it means. Right? David failed in many of these areas. He was very weak as a father. Is yes. Is it fair to say that before... Uh Okay, so the question is, is it right to say that before David committed adultery with Bathsheba, he's, he was a strong leader? What do you think? We studied that in detail. Well, everyone nodding, right? It was. It was. He was. He, he was very careful, very sensitive and all that. But after being king, things became more complex. My friends, understand when you become church leader, when you become leader at work, when you become committee member, when you become um, church leader, things can get very... When you become father, uh, Adrian, is things a lot more complex now as a father? Tons more complex. And that is when you must be strong. Easy to be strong. Sometimes when you just run, you know, on, the, on the run, persecution, yeah, you're strong. But when things get peaceful, when you get much in life, when things get more complex, that is when don't fail like David. All right? God gave a very clear commentary. But thankfully, throughout all this, David always still, Lord, I leave my life in your hand. David remained that way. 
but very weak in many as a father. Now, David obviously did not discipline his children for years. He let his children do whatever they want all this time. Understand that? That's why Absalom knew how this is going to turn out. Dad is not going to do anything. Amnon knew how to play the dad. Willingly lie. So by and large, most people realize David's weakness was this. A weak father that did not persevere in disciplining, bringing up his children, and he always gave in. No? So that's a danger. It's not easy, obviously. But we know the consequences here. All right? We know the consequences here. It's very tiring. Now, I told you about my sister-in-law. I really salute her. My niece made it to the school team for netball. Netball, yeah. And it became like national event and all that. And my niece refused to obey her in something that was necessary. Didn't bother. Can't be bothered. Say, whatever. And my sister-in-law said, then you will not be at the um, national netball event or some, some major event. You can go, but you will not play. Call the coach, she's not playing. I'm not giving permission. Then at the game, uh, the parents who saw that, the parents cried, you know. Crying, why? Why? How can you? The parents were crying, even the parents couldn't take it. But she was very still hearted. Won't give in. Won't give in. Because you know, this girl has been doing this for too long. And if I don't teach her, she will grow up thinking that she will always get away. Hmm? So difficult, right? Parents, difficult? Very difficult. You think church easy? You say, ah, pastor, no children. All these children, you know. The problems that you have, my problem. When it's wrong, I can't give in. I do my best to explain. But sometimes I feel very tired. Now. Honestly, I tell you. Sometimes you know, say, ah, just let the person do whatever. But when I was preparing this, I remembered. If I let that happen, then the church family will go into chaos. Things in church will go wrong. Because other people will begin to do what you do. And if I am partial, so this is my family. You're older than me, but... I'm your pastor, so you're my child, in that sense. If I'm partial, people will see. Now, if you, think I'm, if you ever think I'm partial, please talk to me. Sometimes there are reasons why I make certain decisions with session. There's so many decisions I make sure I tell session. Sometimes it may look like that, but please come and talk to me. I do not want to be a partial leader. I want to handle things rightly all the time, and sometimes I may overlook some things that I don't know. But please... Talk to us, church leaders. Same for you. I think you have been partial. I'll talk to you. Okay? Um, why are we here? So strong man. Strong man is not church leader and running around making a lot of noise, all right? Not just you're doing things. Very obvious out there. David was a weak leader in these situations. David was a strong leader before that, correct? A just man, someone who will stick to principles even if it means it is your own relatives and your best friend in church. You still need to stick to what is biblically right in the eyes of God. Once you fail, I tell you, unless you want church to be like David's life, one fight after another. Once people know the church will always be just right, they will not play games. Ziba will not dare to come. Okay? When Zibas come, all of us will be, let me do some fact-finding. <laughs> it's always like that. Let me ask you more. I ask the person in, to come into the room, ah, Pastor, nothing, nah, it's okay already. <laughs> it's always like that. Right? Okay, so I hope we've learned some lessons from here. Different heads in handling situations. Be very clear about that. Don't mix it up. Be very objective. Okay, let us close in prayer. Now, someone asked, what is the difference between psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs? Someone also asked, can we just have instrumental music? Can, can we worship God with instrumental music?